Hi, I'm Amy Pennington. This week on Check, Please, Northwest, where you take us out to your favorite restaurants. Fancy a neighborhood restaurant with a menu that keeps you guessing? Head up to Queen Anne. Who would know that Brussels sprouts would be so fabulous? Or take a walk down Post Alley for Italian-American and live entertainment. I was really shocked at that. But if simple ingredients in a rustic atmosphere warm your soul, Queen Anne is the place for you. You can taste it all next on Check, Please, Northwest. Check, Please is made possible by Sky City Restaurant atop the Space Needle, where people have been turning special moments into memories for over 50 years. The people at Sky City encourage you to get out and explore all the fresh ideas and tastes our amazing region has to offer. Comfort food is calorie. It's magical. I honestly felt like a fish out of water. Hi, I'm Amy Pennington, and welcome to Check, Please, Northwest, the show where diners from all over the area recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So here's how the show works. Every week we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot, and the other two go to check them out and see what they think. This week, librarian Rosie Brewer wants you to check out a place named after a culinary classic from MFK Fisher and brought to life by Chef Ethan Stowell. But technology marketing manager Judd Hendricks tells us he knows just the spot to unwind. He says his place is on top of Queen Anne and it really hits the mark. But up first, when UW student Anna Marie Talaridi is ready to put down the books and pick up a fork, she heads to the Pike Place Market and goes through a pink door. I don't like to control what the customer is going to experience here except to give them the fodder to do so and that means really really good food the best olive oil the best bread the best fresh vegetables the seasonal food and eye candy we've got beautiful women doing acrobatics from the ceiling really beautiful music from musicians that we support in the community delicious wine and of course really 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 nice smells Okay, there we go. We serve Italian-American food. I'm Italian-American. My grandparents are from Napoli. I ended up opening the restaurant 30 years ago, December 1st, 1981, and knew that I love to feed people. I hired one of my servers to paint that painting. I wanted the dog to be eating Chopino at a table because oftentimes she ate at our table on a chair. <laughs> It's the visuals, it's the smells, it's the good food, and most of all, it's what happens after you leave here when you say, I had such a good time, I had so much fun. Anna Marie, you say the Pink Door is the place to go for good food and great entertainment. So tell me why you chose it. Oh my gosh, I love Italian food because my family is from southern Italy and I'm always looking for the next great place to go and get like amazing meatballs. And so I went into the Pink Door a couple years back, got the rigatoni with the meatballs and I was like, this is my place to go. So tell me about this favorite dish, rigatoni meatballs. You had it once and you were sold. What's yeah. so special about it? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, it seems like they really take a lot of time throughout the day to probably uh, prep the sauce. That's like an important thing um, with when you're cooking Italian food is to have like an amazing sauce. So I'm always thinking that they're spot on with their sauce and then just as well with their herbs and it, that they use with the different meatballs. I think they do an excellent job. And what did you have when you went there, Rosie? Did you have any saucy meatball-y dishes? No, I wish I had because I had the Pink Door Cipino. And I wasn't fond of it. It was, to me, a little bland. But mm. I did have the sautéed calamari. Oh, how did you like it? Oh, it was fantastic. It's like calamari usually comes breaded. You know, you don't yeah, get the yeah, steak yeah. very much. This was cut up in these wonderful, succulent little strips. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And also the lemon tart brulee for dessert. Oh, I've never gotten that before. Was it good? Have it. Fab fantastic. Loved Sounds it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so I will give it that prop. And so the food was fine. It wasn't fabulous, except for those two things were really good. Mm -hmm. But I... I think I will go, if I go again, it'll be the night when they have the entertainment. I wanted to love that restaurant because I had fond memories of it, too. And when I went back, I found that the food wasn't um, as exciting as I'd remembered it. What so, did you end up having? Um, I had a risotto with wild foraged mushrooms, which was okay. 
I mean, it's hard to mess up risotto. Um, and I had the butternut squash ra ravioli, which was also pretty good. Um, but nothing that really stood out. Did you have a starter? I did. I had, um, I forget the name of the dish, but it was basically white beans and kale on bruschetta. And I ordered the fatunto, which is a grilled bread. And that's what got the scorn of the waiter. He uh, suggested that both of those dishes were very similar, and I'd made an error in my choice. That's so surprising to me. I, like, always have a good experience there. <laughs> what did you have this last time that you had, Anna Marie? Um, the Anna pasta tray to start, as well as the cheese plate. And as soon as the waiter brought out the cheese plate, it was so awesome. Like, it was the first time I'd ever had it. And he brought out the cheese plate, and he was telling me, he was like, okay, this is, like, what this is, and, like, this is what you should have with it, and paired it with my drink, and it was fantastic. I loved it. I had wine, and I will say they had a Pinot Blanc, which you don't find by the glass very much. We often don't get bottles because my husband and I do not drink the same wine or order the same kind of food, so I usually order by the glass, and Pinot, the Pinot Blanc was fabulous. Loved it. So let's talk about neighborhood, because the Pink Door is in a pretty substantially significant neighborhood of Seattle. What did you think of the Pink Door's neighborhood, Rosie? Oh, I love it. I love it down there. And I have actually been there for drinks out on the patio, and that's, oh, isn't that fabulous? that's pretty fabulous. I love it. Yeah, so, I mean, I think, I think, the other thing I noticed, though, that I didn't really like, too, and I hate to be beating up on the Pink Door a little bit, but it seemed very touristy. Mm -hmm. Lots of people wandering around like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Saturday night at dinner time, you know what I mean? It's fun, you know, and yeah. it, it is a Seattle institution, and it's a fun experience, and it's dimly lit, and you feel like, uh, because there's no signage on the outside, mm -hmm. you feel like you're a member of an exclusive club. Yeah, that's or, you know, yeah. It's kinda, true. It's like that's a speakeasy yeah. yeah, almost. Definitely. So for no one who's been there before, you walk in the door, and like, what do you see? What does it feel like? Very kind of old-fashioned. You walk downstairs, if you come in through the pink door and very good lighting, kind of odd, quirky little things on the ceiling. You can see the trapeze. Very warm, actually, and inviting and, and active and lively. And then there's two rooms, right? Yeah, so there's yeah. a front room and a back room. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the back room, Anna Marie? The back room is kind of like by the bar, so it's a little bit more fun. You can see kind of the, um, the waiter and uh, the people in the bar kind of interacting a little bit more. It's very fun to go out and sit on the deck and kind of watch the boats nearby and whatnot. And did you like the atmosphere, Judd? Was, was that a win for you? Did it feel kind of like city? I, I did. I mean, to dovetail with what they're saying, the, the front room, white linen uh, napkins and tablecloths and candlelit and very romantic and intimate. Happy birthday. And then, you know, just in the next room over where the lounge is, it's a little louder, more families, more um, people celebrating. So it's a little more raucous and a little more inviting. Um, I found it more inviting, you know, a little less intimidating than people on first dates. So Anna Marie, Pink Door was your choice. Give us a sum up. I have to say, it's my favorite restaurant in Seattle, so I'm going to stick by my guns and really go <laughs> for it. Get the meatballs every single time. You won't fail. It's a Seattle icon. you got to go at least once. I'd wait for the patio to be open and dine al fresco. That really makes the difference. Excellent. Well, you can experience the Italian cuisine yourself at the Pink Door. 1919 Post Alley in Seattle. 206-443-3241, open for lunch and dinner, and reservations are accepted. Next, a Queen Anne place that believes change is not only good, but is the key to success. Marketing manager Judd Hendricks thinks so too, and he wants us to join him at his pick and visit the Five Spot. We opened in 1990, and we have served over 3 million people here. Bathroom, please. We do regional American foods. We're not fuss budgets. The moniker uh, comfort food is a little overused these days but that's what we've been doing here for 22 years. If you want a hot turkey sandwich with, you know, mashed potatoes and gravy and glazed carrots, come to the Five Spot. You want pan fried chicken, come to the Five Spot. We will change uh, about 50 to 60% of our menu each and every quarter. Well, now we're doing a Key West theme. We thought it'd be a fun springtime event. Before that, we did a, a Broadway theme. 
and we thought that we could build our menu items off of the themes for many of the Broadway shows. We have a lot of people that are able to walk right into the restaurant that live in the neighborhood. Lots of families, we're very uh, community oriented. We've got a remarkable staff. You know, they're the ones that make everything happen here. It's not me, it's them. <laughs> We like to give good portions of reasonably priced food. We want them to leave, uh, hopefully with a smile on their face and a full belly. So Jed, you said you love the five spot. <laughs> Tell us why you love it. I do, well there are a lot of reasons why I love the five spot. First of all, it's a quintessential neighborhood joint. The menu is good old American food, comfort food. But the thing I really like the most about the five spot is the rotating monthly special. So the, the menu is never stagnant. You can always get something you've never had before unless you eat there every night, which is unlikely. They have um, a commitment to sourcing ingredients locally, and they participate in community awareness activities. They're often um, cleaning up the neighborhood or sponsoring um, some type of local food drive. I feel bad because they're doing all those good things, but I was sitting in there and thinking, this is so not me. I mean, comfort food is calories. There was a family sitting next to me, and the little girl had the biscuits and gravy, and I just about, oh, wow. You know, I would never order it, unfortunately, but it looked delicious. So I get that. Lots of families, but very quirky inside and frantic and busy, and it just, my whole idea of going out is the, is the whole ambiance, the whole experience, and so it wouldn't be a place that I would, I would choose. That's really surprising to me, because when I went there, I was, like, really shocked by the good service, and I thought that it was a really good atmosphere. I would definitely go No, there. I agree with you. The service was good. I have yeah. no problem with the service. But just a little noisy and a lot of stuff going on, and I just mm. didn't feel that it was relaxing. If you're going out with a group of friends and having some beers and an informal meal, I think that um, the loud hustle and bustle can be a selling feature almost, just to keep it a little more casual. What did you eat? I had the honey stung chicken, and let me tell you, it was like some of the best chicken I've ever had. It was country fried chicken, and it was just delightful. I The breading was perfect. It wasn't like too thick, but not too thin at the same time, and I had mashed potatoes with it, and then as well as glazed carrots, and it was just phenomenal. Loved it. And what did you drink? With the chicken. I was really wanting like a root beer float, but they didn't have one on the menu. And I was like, gosh, I really wish I had one. So the lady actually ended up making one for me, like with their specialty root beer that they carry and then like added in the ice cream. And it was awesome. Rosie, what did you eat when you went? Well, I was talking about calories. I guess I shouldn't say I had the catfish po' boy and coleslaw. <laughs> oh, but, well, you know, it was, it was fine. You know, it was fine. Chad, what did you eat when you went for this visit? Uh, they had a special pork chop that was... Uh, it had been brined for like 12 hours and served with this pan gravy with uh, roasted shallots, and it was really delicious. Um, and it was served over polenta, um, which is some of the best that I'd had. And what about your service experience? How was yours, Anna Marie? Let's start with you. Oh, my gosh, wonderful from the start. Like, honestly, I, some of the best service I've actually encountered in Seattle. The waitress was so polite. One of my friends was running late, and she just made like a like great like point to come over check on us like make sure we didn't want anything to drink before my friend got there so very aware of the situation and wanting to make it very pleasing let's talk about um portion what do you think about your portion size rosie was it was it acceptable for you was it too much too little it's huge i mean big portion so if you like big portions that would be one seller for that place yeah how did you feel about the the price uh, did you feel like it was a bang for your buck i do i feel i feel it's good i, I mean I can see why you like it, that it's the neighborhood thing. I, would, I think if I were to go back, I would sit at the bar and try to get to be friends with the bartender. <laughs> so next time I go, yeah. he'll know something about me. I yeah. like to sit at bars. <laughs> and how about you, Anna Marie? It was pretty affordable, definitely. And I actually, I, I always eat a lot when I go out to dinner. And then yet I still had enough to bring home for the next day. So it was really great. And talk to me a little bit about the location, Jed, in the neighborhood. Um, well, it's right up on the main drag in the Upper Queen Anne. So um, if you have friends from out of town or if you just have some extra time to burn, there are all kinds of boutiques and fun shops to walk up and down the street and check out. And then you cap it off at a, with a meal there, and everybody is, uh, to your point, is kind of loud and boisterous, and it's a, <laughs> it's a fun day. And who do you find in the dining room when you were visiting Rosie? It was mostly families with kids, 
and lots of interaction with children, which is not my favorite. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Who would you take there, Jen? What kind of what kind of space is five spot? I would take anybody there. Uh, and, and frankly, I've taken all kinds of visitors from out of town there. Like I said, it's right in my neighborhood. It's a quick walk. It's a hop, skip, and a jump. And I know that I can always count on the food to be delicious. And what do you think, Anna Marie? Who anybody you take? who wants to have fun. That's like, that's my thing. It was just like a fun restaurant to go into. Not so, it's not like a sit down, like white tablecloth kind of place. Like you want to go in there and have like some fun interaction with people that you really, really enjoy to be around. All right, Jed, well, Five Spot was your choice for your favorite restaurant. Give us a quick sum up. Uh, if you're looking for informal, casual dining with consistently good food from a purveyor that cares about the community and the neighborhood that it serves in a fun environment, then the Five Spot's a good choice. I say great for the young crowd, uh, definitely a pleasing for proportion sizes and just an awesome place to go in general. Lively comfort food restaurant that families would probably really enjoy and, and young folks. All right. Well, you can try the latest incarnation and the menu for yourself at Five Spot, 1502 Queen Anne Avenue North in Seattle, 206-285-7768. Open every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and reservations are accepted. When M.F.K. Fisher penned her 1942 collection of essays, she encouraged readers to celebrate life by eating well. Librarian Rosie Brewer concurs. The space in here, I mean, our goal was to make it feel very warm, uh, but also at the same time have it be super cool. So basically people could come in and have that, and have a, you know, a very unpretentious, fine dining experience, but not have to go downtown and do it. Queen Anne's a great neighborhood to be in. Even a, lot, a lot of families, uh, kids come in. Uh, mostly adults get, kind of getting away, but uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great neighborhood. I had a Cook a Wolf as a name. I named it that because, uh, mostly because my mom. My mom's a huge MFK Fisher fan. It's the name of one of her books. I put out 10 names on a piece of paper. Kind of the most wild one was, uh, was How to Cook a Wolf. And it was like, oh, let's just use that because nobody's going to get it. And which, which, which is what I like about it. What I'd like people to, to think when they see our menu is, you know, here's something that's familiar that might be accented with something that's a little adventurous. And it ends up being this dining experience where one thing comes and another thing kind of flows into it. The third thing flows as the first one's gone. And so it ends up being this kind of, you know, the, you know this really pleasant flowing of food. When people come in and have a cook a wolf, we, I mean, we really want them to feel like they're in a special place, but it's also really, uh, really clean lines, uh, really simple. And, you know, the food's really very much matches that. We want people to eat well and dine well and be treated well and uh, have a good time. <laughs> Rosie, you say that How to Cook a Wolf is a great way to celebrate life. Tell us why you chose it. Well, my favorite kind of dining experience is not a big plate of pasta, not a huge steak, but bring on those little plates so that I can have a taste of all kinds of fabulous things. And How to Cook a Wolf does that superlatively. Just fabulous. Every, every, uh, it's a bunch of small plates, and you choose and you eat family style, and it's a wonderful dining experience. And Judd, what did you have when you went to How to Cook a Wolf? Uh, I had a few different dishes. Uh, the one that really stands out for me, though, is the risotto with a foraged wild mushroom. You finally had a good risotto. Yes. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, which was really good in the salad, too. I, I had a mixed green salad, very simple, Loved thin it. slices of pear, uh, toasted pistachios and roasted shallots. And you would think that with such a short list of ingredients, um, that there wouldn't be a lot of room for nuance, but it, it, was, it was amazing. It was a, probably the best salad I've ever had. I also had the baby green salad, absolutely beautifully dressed, lovely to look at, delicious. Then I had the um, caramelized Brussels sprouts with bacon. Who would know that Brussels sprouts would be so fabulous? Fabulous. Then I had the ahi tuna, perfectly crusted on the outside, rare on the inside, and then Ethan Stoll restaurants, as people probably know, are all about pasta. So we had two pasta dishes that we shared. One was a, por a beef cheek pasta, 
and the other was a pork, uh, a pork pasta. You're Italian, Anna Marie. Did you like? Did you have pasta there? Yeah, I had the gnocchi, and I am having a hard time like seeing why you like it so Horrors. much. I make, <laughs> I make my own gnocchi at home, and I just it was not a good experience for me at all. I thought that they were really dense. Yeah, they were very and very dense. heavy. And, and mine came out like cold, actually, like a little bit cold. I was really shocked at that. There wasn't a wow factor. And then the fact that I paid like sixteen dollars for like a tiny plate of pasta, I was just thinking the entire time. I was like, oh my gosh, like no student or like you know t mid twenties type would like go to this place and like want to enjoy this. Like I could make it at home better. I could see that it might be daunting in the fact that you do need to order several several plates, but there was nothing on the menu that was over twenty dollars so um, and I felt that if you just wanted some pasta you probably could have the pasta in the salad and have a fairly good a good meal that wouldn't be bad so I think I think it's great I think that one can feel compelled to order a number of dishes which can spiral out of control especially <laughs> after you have a few glasses of wine yes. you know you're probably a little sticker shock That's there's the potential point. for that yeah <laughs> but um, you know I really enjoyed the meal and I don't put a cap on enjoyment you know Good for you. How about uh, the service experience? How was the service there, Judd? At 5.30 on a Monday night, uh, tables were already at a premium. Mm -hmm. So I sat at the bar, which is great. You know, it kind of forces a higher degree of interaction with the, with the person that's bringing you your dishes. So I don't know if that's the best barometer to use, but she was great. She suggested wine, um, and she was attentive and, and brought, and, you know, everything that I needed when I wanted it. So, What did you think, Anna Marie? I honestly felt like a fish out of water when I sat down there. Like, much older clientele than me, like, I felt, like, super young to be there. But they weren't yeah. snobby. They were did, a little, I'm not going to lie, they think? were a little bit snobby to me. And wow. I mean, like, I don't think that they really, like, helped me to, like, be in place, I guess you could say. Yeah. Hmm. All right, well, let's talk about the look and feel of the room. <sighs> yeah, it's like being inside a, 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 a wine cast, a... Uh, a cask or something, you know, or, or a wine mm. cellar. It has uh, this lovely copper um, edging around the, the, the room that, that the light flickers off of, and it's just very qu quiet, good conversation you can have because it's not noisy, and you just, and especially it was a rainy night, so you feel all cocooned, and just, I just loved it. And what about beverages? Anne-Marie, did you try something? So I had the Francesca, and that was probably the highlight of my meal. <laughs> <laughs> well, like a, I had like vodka in it and um, some other like fruity things, like grapefruit juice, I think, and it was it was good. I thought it was tasty. I had a drink known as the Marcello, which was uh, ginger beer and or ginger ale, um, and lemon juice or lime juice rather, and vodka it was delicious. Did anyone have a something sweet to end their meal? What did you have? Chocolate pudding cake. Mm. Delish. What is chocolate pudding cake? How do they do it? It is cake, but in the middle, it's pudding. <laughs> it's very, very rich. <laughs> very good. It was shared. Okay, and is it hot out of the oven? Yes. Yeah, it was very good. So it's, it's like a little volcano, you know. You, you cut into it, and, and it all sort of... Very good. If you like chocolate, delicious. And what about the neighborhood, Rosie? Talk to us about where it's located. Love Queen Anne. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a, an oasis. You don't feel like you're in a big city at all, and yet you're close to everything. All right, Rosie. Well, How to Cook a Wolf was your choice for your favorite pick in Seattle. Give us a sum up. Okay. Great service, great ambiance, great food, one of the great dining experiences in Seattle. Anne-Marie? I definitely say not a winner in my book. I would have to say that the food is uh, amazing. And if you can get a table, then I suggest you try. All right. Well, you can try and get a table and try Chef Ethan Stoll's creations for yourself at How to Cook a Wolf. 2208 Queen Anne Avenue North in Seattle, 206-838-8090. It's open every day for dinner and reservations are accepted. So on this week's show, we featured three Seattle restaurants, The Pink Door in the Pike Place Market, and Five Spot and How to Cook a Wolf on Queen Anne. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First up is The Pink Door on Post Alley. Anna Marie says it's her favorite restaurant. 
Rosie says it's a Seattle icon and you gotta go at least once. Judd says dining on the patio is the place to be. Then we went to the five spot on the top of Queen Anne Hill. Judd says it serves up consistently good food in a fun environment. Anna Marie says it's a great place for a young crowd and an awesome place to go. Rosie says it's lively and families would enjoy it. Finally, we strolled down Queen Anne and stopped in at How to Cook a Wolf. Rosie says it's one of the great dining experiences in Seattle. Anne Marie says it wasn't her favorite. Judd says if you can get a table, the food is amazing. I'd like to thank my guests, Anna Marie Talleridi, Judd Hendricks, and Rosie Brewer. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please. I'm Amy Pennington, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Thanks for coming to the table and sharing your experience. Check Please is made possible by Sky City Restaurant atop the Space Needle, where people have been turning special moments into memories for over 50 years. The people at Sky City encourage you to get out and explore all the fresh ideas and tastes our amazing region has to offer.